Hello, I'm Dr. Jacob Hudis. Welcome to Mastering AC Circuits. If you want to truly understand AC circuits, you've come to the right place. This video unpacks AC circuit behavior and impedance starting with the key differences between alternating and direct current. Alternating current powers everything from homes to cutting edge technology. If you watch until the end, you'll not only grasp how AC circuits work, but also master the equations and gain real physical insight into their behavior. Let's start by understanding the two main types of electric current direct current and alternating current. Direct current flows in only one direction. It's produced by batteries, solar cells, and DC power supplies. It's used in low voltage applications like electronics and portable devices. Alternating current changes direction periodically with alternating polarity. It's generated by power plants and used in household and industrial power systems. And it's suitable for long distance transmission. This lesson focuses on AC circuits. But before diving in, it's important to have a solid grasp of voltage and current. This slide provides a brief review, assuming prior knowledge of these concepts. The key fundamentals to remember are that current is the flow of positive charge and always moves from high to low voltage. Current flows from high potential to low potential. This is a fundamental principle of DC circuits. Current is defined as the flow of positive charge, moving from the positive to the negative terminal of the battery. In a DC resistive circuit, the battery's positive terminal is at a higher potential. When connected, charge redistributes almost instantly, creating strong electric fields inside the resistors. These fields drive a steady current, with charges losing energy as heat. Voltage drops occur across resistors, not wires. The total battery voltage equals the sum of all voltage drops across the resistors. This circuit consists of a 3-volt battery and two 0.5-ohm resistors. This is the positive terminal of the battery, and at this location, there's 3 volts of potential. The potential remains the same 3 volts along this ideal wire. Because we know the resistance and the voltage, Ohm's law tells us that there are 3 amps of current that flow through this circuit. As charges pass through the first resistor, they lose 1.5 volts of potential. This leaves 1.5 volts everywhere along this ideal wire. After passing through the second resistor, they lose another 1.5 volts, reaching 0 volts on the ground. When a positive charge leaves the battery, another is lifted from the ground to a potential of 3 volts. A useful analogy is the game Plinko. A puck lifted to the top gains gravitational potential energy. As it falls, it loses energy, but instead of moving fast at the bottom, most of the energy is dissipated into vibrations and heating of the pegs. Resistance to motion occurs as electrons collide with atomic nuclei in the material. In a DC series circuit, the current is a constant value everywhere. In a power supply or a standard wall outlet, the terminal voltage is not constant but instead oscillates over time. The two most common voltage and frequency standards are 120 volts at 60 hertz in North America and 230 volts at 50 hertz in Europe, while direct voltage and alternating voltage might be more precise terms than direct current and alternating current. The distinction is largely semantic, as voltage directly influences current. Here's an example of a purely resistive AC circuit. It's a resistor connected to an AC power source. In any purely resistive circuit, all of the energy from the power supply or battery is dissipated as heat in the resistor. For a resistive circuit, this holds true regardless of whether the voltage is DC or AC. The key feature of a resistive circuit is that the voltage and current are in phase. This is a plot of voltage versus time, and this is a plot of current versus time. Notice when the voltage is a maximum, the current is a maximum. When the voltage is zero, the current is zero. And when the voltage is a minimum, the current is a minimum. This is what it means to be in phase. The voltage of the power supply and the current reach their peak and zero values simultaneously. AcePhysics.org, math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis. Now. Let's shift our focus from a purely resistive AC circuit to a purely inductive AC circuit. In any circuit, the voltage supplied by the power supply must be lost by the sum of the voltage losses across the circuit elements. Previously, the circuit contained only resistors. Here, it consists of an inductor with negligible resistive losses from the wiring. If resistance is sufficiently small, it can be approximated as a purely inductive AC circuit. Circuit analysis dictates that the voltage from the power supply must be lost by the resistor and the inductor. The driving voltage from the power supply must equal the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage across the inductor. Ohm's law tells us that the voltage across the resistor is IR. From Faraday's law, we know the voltage across the inductor is LDIDT. Using these formulas, we get a differential equation. This differential equation allows us to solve for the current as a function of time. The equation is not hard to solve, but it's beyond the scope of this video. This graph 
shows the current in the circuit, as well as the voltage from the driving source, which matches the voltage across the inductor for this specific circuit. As you can see on the graph of current and voltage, the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. When the voltage is zero, the current is at a maximum negative value. In the next few slides, I will provide insight into why this occurs. The phenomenon is challenging to grasp, but I'll do my best to break it down intuitively. The power supply operator sets the voltage and frequency. The phase shift is between the voltage of the power supply and the current. The inductor opposes changes in current, not current itself. Unlike a resistor, which only resists current, an inductor stores and releases energy, opposing and enhancing current flow at various times in the cycle. This slide is titled Intuition Behind Inductive Phase Lag. In an inductor, current lags voltage by 90 degrees. I analyze the problem in small time steps to build intuition. The table on the left shows time intervals, 0 to 0.1 seconds, 0.1 to 0.2 seconds, 0.2 to 0.3 seconds, and so on. This column is the voltage of the driving source, also known as the power supply. In this particular circuit, the voltage of the driving source is always equal to the voltage across the inductor. The final column is the current as a function of time. Voltage and current values are given at the midpoint of each interval. Initially, the power supply voltage is near zero, and there's a large negative current flow. This arrow represents the current flow. It's a big arrow, which means there's a large current flow, and it's going in the counterclockwise direction, which I'm defining as negative for this setup. As the voltage of the power supply increases slightly between 0.1 and 0.2 seconds, the current also increases, becoming less negative. The power supply's voltage increases because that's what the power supply does. That causes a change in the current. The current becomes larger. It becomes a smaller negative number. And the changing current induces an opposing voltage in the inductor counteracting the power supply voltage. And the process continues. Once again, the voltage of the power supply increases. That causes the current to increase. It becomes a smaller negative number. The changing current induces a voltage over the inductor. The current increases. It becomes less negative, And the voltage across the power supply and the inductor increase. And now the inductor has stored energy inside of its magnetic field. In an AC circuit, an inductor does not resist voltage directly, but instead opposes changes in current. According to Faraday's law, a changing current creates an induced voltage across the inductor. This means that even when the inductor's voltage matches the applied voltage, current can still flow because the inductor responds to the rate of change of current, not just the voltage itself. Unlike a resistor, which dissipates energy as heat, an inductor stores magnetic energy, allowing current to flow even when its voltage is zero. This process continues as long as the power supply is operating. When the voltage is zero, the current is at a large and negative value. As the voltage across the power supply and the inductor increase, the current also increases, but the current is out of phase with the voltage. When the voltage is maximum, the current is not maximum. When the current is maximum, the voltage is not maximum. In an inductor, the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. A useful analogy for inductance is inertia, the property of mass that resists changes in motion. Imagine a bowling ball rolling forward. If you push against it in the opposite direction of motion, it slows down but keeps moving forward. Once the force is removed, the ball continues rolling just at a reduced speed. Similarly, an inductor resists changes in current, allowing it to keep flowing even when the applied voltage changes. This slide is titled Reactance versus Resistance, How Inductors and Resistors Oppose Current. An inductor has a property called inductive reactance. It opposes current changes by inducing an electric field through Faraday's law. If the current is increasing through an inductor, by Faraday's law, the inductor creates an electric field that opposes the current. The opposing electric field resists current flow in an inductor, unlike a resistor, which impedes motion through electron atom collisions. With inductive reactants, the battery's energy is converted into the inductor's magnetic field that's not lost as heat. When the current decreases through an inductor, the inductor actually boosts the voltage. So an inductor doesn't have resistance, it has reactance because it depends on changing current, unlike a resistor. A resistor has resistance. This resists current flow by electron collisions with atoms or atomic nuclei. Resistance is constant in an AC or a DC circuit, unlike reactance. With a resistor, energy is dissipated as heat. It's not stored in a magnetic field. Let's shift from a purely inductive AC circuit to a purely capacitive AC circuit. In any circuit, the power supply voltage must be lost across the circuit elements. Solving the circuit's differential equation gives expressions for current and voltage, where the phase angle phi represents their phase difference. Initially, when the voltage of the power supply is zero, the current is at its maximum positive value. On the next slides, I will provide an intuitive explanation 
of why current leads voltage in a capacitor. This slide is titled Intuition Behind Capacitive Phase Lead. In a capacitor, current leads voltage by 90 degrees. This is a table very similar to the table on the inductor slide. It has time intervals, the voltage across the capacitor. In this circuit, the voltage across the capacitor equals the voltage across the power supply, and this column represents current as a function of time. When the voltage across the capacitor and the power supply is zero, the current is at its maximum positive value. This is a large positive of current that's going in the clockwise direction, which I'm defining to be positive, and it's a large arrow. As the current flows, it deposits positive charge on the capacitor. Now the capacitor has some energy stored in its electric field, and the electric field opposes the current, which reduces it. The power supply increases its voltage because that's what the power supply does, and this all happens over an incredibly short time period. And then the current which is flowing deposits more positive charge on the capacitor, which again reduces the current, and then the power supply increases again. The current starts at a large positive value. When the current is at its maximum value, the voltage across the capacitor is zero. As the current decreases, the voltage across the capacitor increases. And this process just continues indefinitely as long as the power supply is running. A useful analogy is a swing. It moves fastest at the lowest point and momentarily stops at the highest. You push when it reaches its peak, even though it isn't moving at that instant. Similarly, in a capacitor, current peaks before voltage following the same out-of-phase relationship. A capacitor behaves like a swing, storing energy and releasing it as voltage, oscillating back and forth out of phase with the driving force or push. The title of this slide is Resistance and Reactance. Resistance is a property of resistors. It's given by the symbol R. Resistance slows down current and converts electrical energy into heat. It works the same in both AC and DC circuits. Resistance is independent of frequency. There's something called capacitive reactance. X sub C is capacitive reactance. It's equal to one over omega C. Omega is angular frequency, two pi F. It's proportional to regular frequency. And C is the capacitance value of the capacitor. If the driving voltage of the power supply is a low frequency, like this black line, the capacitive reactance will be large. And if the driving frequency is high, like the dotted blue line, the capacitive reactance will be small. Capacitive reactance resists AC current by storing energy in electric field, decreasing as frequency increases. Finally, there's inductive reactance. Inductive reactance is equal to omega times L. L is the inductance value of the inductor in your circuit. Inductive reactance resists AC current by storing energy in a magnetic field, increasing as frequency increases. Resistors, capacitors, and inductors all impede current in a circuit. Resistance does not depend on frequency, whereas inductive and capacitive reactants do. Inductors and capacitors impede current, but unlike resistors, their reactance depends on frequency. This is a plot of capacitive reactance versus frequency. At high frequencies, the capacitor never has time to charge significantly, so it is like an empty capacitor with little energy stored and little resistance to current, leading to low impedance. When the power supply is at a high frequency, the capacitor is basically uncharged and doesn't impede current. At low frequencies, the capacitor fully charges before the voltage changes, blocking current like an open circuit and resulting in high impedance. At low frequencies, the capacitor will be fully charged and current won't be able to flow. This works in the opposite way for inductors. At low frequency, an inductor allows current to flow easily with low resistance. At high frequencies, Faraday's law causes strong induced voltages, increasing reactance and opposing current flow. In a series RLC circuit, the voltage from the power supply must equal the voltage dissipated in the resistor plus the voltage across the inductor plus the voltage across the capacitor. We know the voltage across the resistor is IR. The voltage across the inductor is I times inductive reactance. This little i is the square root of negative one. It's there because the current in an inductor lags the voltage by 90 degrees. The voltage across the capacitor is I times negative I XC. The reason for this negative I is because the current in a capacitor leads the voltage by 90 degrees. Part two coming shortly will have several example problems. Ohm's law for AC circuits says V equals I times the impedance. The impedance is R plus IXL minus IXC, and this gives us the formula for the current in an AC circuit. This is the complex impedance, and this formula gives the magnitude of the impedance. This slide illustrates the behavior of an RLC series circuit driven by an AC voltage source at 1 kHz. The red, green, and blue waves on the right represent different circuit quantities. Red represents the current, green represents the inductor voltage, and blue represents the capacitor voltage. In an AC circuit, current acts like a conveyor belt of charge, continuously oscillating back and forth. 
the inductor and capacitor influence this motion in opposite ways. When the inductor pushes charge in one direction, the capacitor pulls it the opposite way. The resistor, on the other hand, always resists the flow of current dissipating energy as heat, meaning it directly opposes the power supply voltage at all times. Unlike the resistor, the inductor and capacitor do not just resist current. They store and release energy, causing a delay between voltage and current. This timing difference, called a phase shift, affects how the circuit responds to AC. The total opposition to current, known as impedance, depends on the combined effects of resistance, inductance, and capacitance at the given frequency. Stay tuned for part two, where I'll solve AC circuit example problems and break down low pass and high pass filters. Also, if you enjoy physics content and you got any value out of this, please like, subscribe, and leave comments. AcePhysics.org, math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis.